and welcome to another episode of Diecast Restos. My name is Jason and these are the 13A and 13B Rec Trucks. This 13A model was introduced in 1955 before it was replaced by the slightly modified and elongated 13B Rec Truck in 1958. This ran until 1960 when it was replaced by a Thames Wrecker. Here is the most notable difference between the two models. The back section has an extended flat top. Both would of course have a jib, but as is so often the case, the 13A jib is missing as it simply clips into the body. The 13B however attaches to the rear axle. This wrecker has been repainted green and black by a previous owner and requires a replacement hook. Both have crimped axles and share the same silver trim on the grille and front bumper. The models are based on a Bedford O-Type truck which was introduced in 1939 in long and short wheelbase variations. Military versions were produced during the war years. I'll go into some more details about the truck later, but here's a pic of the real thing in short wheelbase form. First up, the crimps on the axle ends are ground down using my abrasive rotary tool attachment. And then I do the same to remove the broken tow hook still clinging onto the jib. So here are all the parts making up the 13B truck. And then those for the 13A, missing the hook and arm of course. The rear axle was severely bent in the 13A, so I hammer that straight. I've sourced a replacement hook for the 13B Bedford from model-supplies.co.uk and I attach that here prior to priming and painting. The towing arms and hooks were always painted after assembly in the Lesney factory. You can tell as the small axles securing the hook were coloured in dark red. Once it is tapped in slightly with a hammer, I use a set of locking pliers or vice grips to flatten the ends of the axles into the crimp shape. With the 13B jib fully functioning, I turn my attention to the 13A replica. I have already secured the hook, but you can see the holes on the cross section of the jib are filled in. By comparison, they are punched through on the 13B version. I opt to use some small metal files to open up the holes again. It's a bit of a slow process and takes some effort. I could maybe have used a punch, but I was wary of damaging the part and having to start over. Next, I move on to removing the surface rust from both sets of axles. I do this by placing them inside my battery drill and buffing against some fine grit sandpaper. Then each of the metal wheels is cleaned up in some warm soapy water. Now the metal parts are placed in hot water for paint stripping. That water turned green from the overlay of hobby paint on the 13B very quickly indeed. Anyway, now each model and its towing arm are buffed using a wire wheel in my rotary tool. The Bedford O-Type trucks had 3.5 litre Chevrolet engines, 4 speed gearboxes and hydraulic brakes. Production ran until 1953 when the aging styling was replaced by Bedford's TA series. 
The O's were suitable for three quarter ton to five ton payloads. As I've mentioned in my Lomas ambulance restoration, Bedford were the commercial vehicle arm of British manufacturer Vauxhall. Bedford was established in 1931, constructing light commercial vehicles. General Motors owned Vauxhall at the time, all the way through until 2017 in fact. Until the takeover in 1925, GM sold trucks built in Britain using Canadian manufactured parts as British Chevrolet. From 1929, models were produced in Luton, the base of Vauxhall, and commercial vehicles were now sold as Chevrolet Bedford instead. The name came from Bedford, the county town of Bedfordshire, in which Luton is located. The Chevrolet name was dropped, and in April 1931, the first Bedford vehicle was produced. Bedford's early success lay mostly in the solid 3.5 litre Chevrolet overhead valve six cylinder engine. The unit proved to be the basis of most Bedford and Vauxhall petrol engines until the Bedford mark ceased in 1986. Interestingly, in the evacuation of Dunkirk during Operation Dynamo in summer 1940, many Bedford trucks, including O-types, were left abandoned in France and Belgium. Trucks built between June and September 1939 for civilian use had been requisitioned by the British government and converted to military use. During the retreat, abandoned vehicles had the engine oil drained and the motors run rendering them useless. However, with the German army short on motorised transportation, many were repaired and put into service alongside the similarly sized and designed Opel Blitz. Opel, like Vauxhall, were at the time also owned by General Motors. So the towing arms have been primed and painted in Tamiya TS33 dull red. And the bodies of the 13A and B are coated in TS68 wooden deck tan. It's a little more matte in finish than the slightly darker original paint, but I think the red and the tan will complement one another. It is difficult to get an exact match with rattle cans, but I'm pleased with how they've turned out. So once the paint has dried, I turn to the locking pliers once again to recrimp the axle ends. On this 13A example, I gently squeeze the bottom section of the jib. This is to allow it to fit through the gap in the chassis without scratching any paint. I check to make sure it's secure. And then I can use the narrow pliers to spread the clips open and secure the towing arm. It's a slightly different process with the 13B as the axle secures the towing arm. It's just a case of positioning everything and attaching it all in order. Once the axle has threaded the towing arm and the wheels have been replaced, I again use the locking pliers to crimp the axle ends. Chrome is applied to the ends of the axles. And silver paint from a Pentel paint pen is applied to each grille and front bumper, as they were sent out of the Lesney factory. I use silver paint instead of chrome on these early models, as it's a little more authentic I feel. Anyway, this is the 13A hookless Bedford O-Type wreck truck that we started off with. The original paint was resilient as always with these early examples, but it was missing its towing arm and had a bent rear axle. The wheels were untidy and were attached to rusty axles. So here is how the 13A version looks now. It has a new hook, jib and coat of paint the TS33 dull red across the entire towing arm. The tan and dull red suit one another and the silver detailing isn't as in your face as chrome trim might have been. 
I'm really pleased with the result, so here's a look at how the 13B originally looked. It had a rough green paint job with a black jib, but had a broken hook, so there were plenty of broken or missing parts to source replacements for during this build. It was stripped back and received all the same treatment as its older brother. So here is a look at how the 13B started off today. Again, much better with a fresh coat of paint, a dash of silver trim, and a new hook. I'd like to thank my new Patreon supporters. You can join up too by clicking on the link at the end of the video, and there you can see a preview of the next model on my workbench. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.